Hey everyone, this is Mandeep Singh Shekhawat and today we are focusing our discussion on system design of Google Docs. So we will try to design a system like Google Docs. If you haven't used Google Docs as of now, it's a kind of a shared editor where multiple people can write uh, into the same document. They can uh, It uh, supports rich text as well where you can insert images and documents like uh, text, images, tables and all those things. So basically uh, we are trying to uh, design a shared uh, collaborative uh, editor okay or a not not taking app so something on the similar line so if we uh, talk about the functional requirement what are the functional requirements of the system like and uh, as of now if you are uh, not subscribed to my youtube channel which is ms deep singh consider subscribing i keep on making videos around system design and large scale distributed systems and deep dive around them so you will learn a lot of things so if you have not done yet, consider subscribing. You will be learning a lot of things. So coming back to our functional requirements. Now, if we talk about the first main requirement, how uh, this system uh, differs from the other systems is there are multiple people who are trying to document at the same time. Okay. So there are multiple people who are trying to edit the document at same time. Concurrency ki baat hum kar rahe hai. And this is the like this is the number maximum of 100. So uh, this number I consider basis looking at some Google documentation. We suggest that uh, up to 100 people it should work fine if there are more than 100 people who are accessing the same document and editing at the same time uh, there might be some issues faced lag or like uh, like it is not refreshed properly and all those things so uh, for our system as well we are considering that uh, the number is not so huge when we say that people are uh, accessing the document concurrently and editing at the same time so this is our kind of main requirement if you are designing google docs now these are kind of requirements uh, like I just added it for sake of adding, but mainly we will focus on this requirement, how uh, you can met uh, conditions or like uh, how can you design a system where multiple peoples are working on it at the same time. So if you look at the other requirements, they are like uh, you want to share the document with other people as well. Uh, definitely if you want multiple people to edit the document at the same time, then you will have to share the document and allow those uh, permissions to those users. So we will have to uh, maintain some kind of database and all like all those things in our system so that uh, uh, we will identify yeah, this uh, this user has this edit permission and this user is allowed to edit this particular document uh, along with this user so uh, this is the functionality we are seeking for another one is editing so again this is related to the first requirement only uh, basically we want to create update delete and do reduce all these functionality should be supported offline doc editing this is not we will not be discussing this but it will be kind of an extension of this so this is uh, like if you are able to do uh, it online then uh, <laughs> Uh, it will not be a much of an issue doing offline basically you will have to take in consideration like how you will basically work on the conflict resolution basically okay and then finally we have a requirement of uh, you can add comments or suggestions or uh, on the doc so we need some kind of versioning so that uh, you can see multiple versions of a document and if i want to let's say uh, these are my versions v1 v2 v3 if i want to switch back to v2 or if i want to switch back to v1 then it should be possible in my system so we'll be discussing that requirement as well now if we uh, talk about non-functional requirement what we call is nfr uh, by the way if you don't know uh, how uh, how you should come up with functional requirements and how you should come up with non-functional requirement for a system and what they mean actually there is actually a video in my playlist or uh, system design playlist so you can go check out that and definitely you will get some insights around uh, designing the systems and like how you should come up with these kind of requirements so for uh, nfr the first requirement is definitely low latency if, we, if, our multi, if multiple people are working on together so let's say this is my document uh, so we have a single document only so in the single document there are multiple users who are uh, concurrently accessing this document so if they are doing some edits if they are doing some edits so other users should be able to see those edits in real uh, near real time okay we are not saying uh, very real time but it's near real time so it's not kind of observable it's near real time it kind of milliseconds or less than a second definitely we are seeking that kind of latency so our system should definitely be serving or uh, operating on a low latency you should be able to view other people changes in real time uh, it's definitely near real time not real time okay uh, high availability definitely uh, if you are designing any application then we want our system to be highly available to be operational for the users who are using that as any hona chahiye ki uh, like people are using the system and they have lost definitely there can be some issues so uh, right now like we let's say we will support uh, up to uh, five times of availability okay and durability is what is like our uh, storage is durable basically uh, what we mean is that uh, once the document is created it will not be lost unless deleted by the user so we are seeking that 
any mechanisms that has to be taken care of the user should not be worried about that a google doc or the google system as a whole should worry about that and it should be handled properly that either we need replication or like what whatever we need uh it should be have it should have been handled properly and users the data is which is stored or like the document which is created by user is durable enough and it is not lost unless it is deleted uh consistency plus conflict resolution so definitely uh if we talk about consistency we need eventual con like we, we are okay with eventual consistency but this eventual consistency should not be too much large okay uh, when i say eventual consistency uh, this is related to this near real near real time approach only that uh, what i mean is that the user should be able to update quickly okay there should be not conflicting uh, versions of a uh, document which is displayed to multiple users okay to jaise apna ye uh, document hai uh let, let's say this there are three users who are editing it so i want i don't want a scenario where this user sees something else and this user uh, this particular user sees something else we don't uh, want that kind of scenario so we are fine with eventual consistency but it should not be that large okay so the system should be operating in near real time uh, we can think that we will try to design our system towards stronger consistency but we are fine with very 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 bahut hi kam lag ke sath okay conflict resolution definitely we need it uh so in case of let's say uh, both of these requirements that multiple uh, people are editing the document at same time and on case of offline document editing or uh, as well we need uh, some mechanism for conflict resolution so uh Uh, it's not the kind of nfr we should be include it's kind of a feature so it will come in our uh, uh, functional requirement only this consistency will definitely be in our uh, non functional requirement then we have multi device support so other uh, users might be using the document from multiple devices let's say i'm using the document from mobile i'm using the document from my laptop i'm using my document from ipad so any device i'm using it should be supported and like any changes which are done on a single device uh, should be reflected on other as well that it's uh, related to our discussion around the uh, multi device support in case of google drive system design so that video we published around 2 uh, weeks back so you can go check out that we discussed the same kind of support in that as well uh final is user authentication plus security this is again a kind of feature so it should not be included in the non functional requirement i don't know why i did it but here it is so it will be in our uh, where it will be in our functional requirement that we want our users to be authenticated plus there should be proper mechanisms of security that show that a users who do not have access to a document is not able to access that document to permissions aapke honi chahiye agar aapko document ko sirf view karna hai ya fir aapko document ko edit karna hai you should be Uh, you should be given those permissions by the owner of the document and once those permissions are provided then only you are able to access the document and according to the permissions given you can perform those kind of actions okay jaise mere ko aapko edit ki permission diya to aap edit kar sakte ho if i am only given you the view permissions then you can only view the document you do will not have the edit permissions so finally uh, like uh, so our next section is around estimations so last week i uh, published a video around estimations how you can actually uh, go about it around uh, how you should come up with the estimation for a particular system uh, we are focusing on uh, very basic numbers here we haven't disc heavy like uh, i haven't uh, spent much time around uh, what is the storage required but if we talk about the number of users so 25 million uh, people use google docs uh, source is definitely internet i don't have that kind of information but yeah so 25 million people use google docs and 29% uses data so it's If we talk about daily active users, it's DAUs daily active users. It's around eight million. So average ten users are part of same doc. And this is the another uh, assumption that on an average for a single document there are ten users who are working at the same time. So if we talk about the total traffic or the total number of uh, people who are using the document at the same time, so we mentioned that eight million are uh, daily active users, and uh, we have ten users per document. Okay. So if we want to calculate the total number of documents, it will be around. are uh, this okay so uh, these are the kind of estimations definitely you can calculate stories as well that if you assume that this is my traffic that i have 8 million users okay and uh, only 90% of those users uh, like uh, divided by 10 we will get total number of uh documents that are being created okay so once we have that number what you can do uh, to calculate the total uh, storage what you will do you can assume that for a single document this is my storage required so let's say the storage required for one document is let's say uh, 10 kb 
okay so this way you can calculate the storage as well for a particular document if definitely there will be other information as well how you are actually storing the document uh it's not that you are storing or you are dumping the document as it is it is retrieved or like how you are maintaining the copies of documents so it will be de uh, dependent on all those factors and related to storage only we will be creating another video in which will in which we will specifically focus on what is the storage required what kind of databases you should, should use so that will be part of second video so that uh, the length of this video is not extended too much so let's look at a very high level system view of how does our system operate so we have two users user one and user two we have document one on which both users are working okay sorry so <clears throat> so we have a user one and user two this is our handsome sa ladka mandeep so mandeep handsome sa ladka hai mandeep ke saath ek user two hai which who are using the same doc one doc is like basically you can say it's the name of a document so they are using the same document and like whatever changes we are doing so let's say i write abc here so it should be reflected here as well so this google doc service is responsible for that operation so basically ye uh, mandeep ka macbook hai yahan pe ye uh, user two ka koi sa bhi laptop hai ya fir uska mobile hai to is google doc service should be is responsible for syncing those changes in the multiple devices or like when the multiple users are trying to make the changes so if let's say user to uh, add a d here it should be reflected here as well so let's discuss how different users are in sync always let's discuss on that so it's uh, similar to around like uh, we had a discussion around uh, a chat messaging application system design that where we discussed a uh, system design of whatsapp so this is similar to a chat messages application how why it is similar because multiple users are trying to send messages to each other right uh, if i say like when i say messages what are these messages these messages are specifically what are the changes to be done so it has done abc so it is sending a message abc this abc abc should be forwarded to this message so this is uh, not exactly a chat messaging application but a similar kind of architecture could be helpful here so if you haven't watched that video i will highly recommend that you watch a whatsapp system design video which is in our playlist again so you can go check that out and you will definitely get insights around how multiple users or in a, uh, like uh, multiple users can interact with each other via chat messages chat messages can be definitely anything it can be text messages or image messages or video messages so in google docs as well two or more users are sharing that local updates with others so similar architecture will be helpful here and what was the, that architecture which we discussed there so we had a bunch of users this is our user mandeep and the another user was sakshi so mandeep and sakshi are communicating with each other so how they are interacting with each other they are interacting with each other via a single thread or web socket handler which is assigned to the each of them okay and this web socket handler information is maintained in our uh, web socket db where we will have the information of like uh, in which uh, which particular web socket handler is associated to let's say this user one is associated to web socket uh, web socket connection one and this is located on machine one so definitely uh, front end service will hold multiple servers so i should be able to figure out this particular user one ka connection kahan pe hai so once i get this message from user uh, user mandeep that i have to apply a update abc so this abc will go to the message queue okay now this collab service will basically do some kind of analysis of conflict resolution and uh, the algorithms we will be discussing so like how this changes should be reflected in the sakshi's document so once that is done uh definitely like uh, it will uh, figure out from the user sessions db where sakshi is located which web socket is assigned to sakshi on which machine the sakshi's web socket is located once it is figured out it the uh, update will be forwarded to sakshi and this is maintained via operation queue operation queue which we are maintaining in between this will basically help us to uh, circulate our traf uh, traffic in a regulated manner regulated when i say uh, that uh, you are not increasing a load on a single service at the same time they are definitely real time but it is managed by that now let's uh, discuss on the algo so co this collab service right this collab service is responsible for conflict resolution as well when i say conflict resolution i mentioned that we have a one document one is adding abc another one is adding a d let's say another using a so in real time how can you do it in real time how will be able to do it so this collab service has some kind of algorithm we should handle that so there are multiple ways on how you can achieve it one is like let's start from the basic so if we talk about locking right what you can do Uh, what you can do so we have this document right we have this document so in this document what we can do when this you uh, mandeep is writing i will say ki sakshi ko is pe kuch nahi likhna hai this sakshi user 
Sakshi user will not be allowed to write anything when Mandeep is writing. So once Mandeep is writing, uh, let's say I have written ABC. Mandeep will say, okay, I'm done writing now. Anyone, any other user can write it. So it's kind of locking or a mutex kind of example that I am done. You can take over and then you can write. So Sakshi has this. Sakshi acquires, acquires the lock of these documents and then added, adds D. So this is the kind of mechanism, uh, like one kind of locking in way. Uh, locking which can be used so it, this is called pessimistic locking such as java re-entrant lock or java read write lock so will only allow one user at a time doesn't show our use case why because we want multiple users making the changes at the same time we don't want any kind of locking mechanisms that uh, one user is allowed and all users will are uh, locked out or like uh, kicked out so uh, we want all the users to be working together uh, second mechanism is optimistic locking mechanism so when i say optimistic what we mean by optimistic is ki, uh, we will allow all the users ki they can go ahead and write and if there any issue occur then i will try to solve the issue okay in first or like in beginning i will assume that there will be no issues that can occur or like there will be no conflicts that will occur so this is kind of optimistic if you check the english word for optim op english meaning of optimistic this is this is the meaning which we get that uh, we will assume we will be optimistic about it that there will be no conflicts that are arising and then i will go ahead and push the update and if case there are conflicts or there are some uh, resolutions to be done then this system this collapse service should be able to do that so there are different algorithms which are there uh, which we'll be discussing in some time so the first one is uh, operational transformation then we have differential synchron synchronization we have three-way merges and then we have crdt let's discuss crdt we will not be discussing if you are interested definitely you can just google crdt and you will get the basic information how basically it works but we will be focusing our uh, all this discussion on three of these algorithms uh, operational transformation differential synchronization this three-way merge is also again not used but we will discuss how like what is the problem with this algorithm and how uh, like why it can't be used so let's uh, first focus on operational transformation how it works with a particular example again we have two users are mandeep and sakshi so this is our user mandeep and this is our user sakshi okay let's change the color of pen okay so uh, we have user uh, sakshi and we have user mandeep and uh, they are trying to write to the same document so if we talk about the initial state of the document what it holds is it holds abc okay in this particular document it holds abc now we are trying to do r2 operation mandeep is doing one operation and sakshi is doing another operation mandeep is what mandeep is doing is mandeep is trying to insert d at location zero okay so this should be converted to dabc got it now another operation which is done by sakshi is delete at uh, position 2 this is zero based index definitely so this document should be converted to ab okay so this is our state right now this uh, document should be converted to abc this document should be converted to ab now this this is not final state right operation or uh, mandeep did some kind of operation and sakshi did some kind of operation so this is not final state now we have to combine these two operations okay now we have to combine this operation this is where our operational transformation algorithm comes in picture our final our final document should look like this dab so this is the basic algorithm it will figure out what what is the uh, place or what what is the character location where the insertion should happen where is the location where this deletion should happen so the location was two right the location was two but if we talk about after this insertion the location will become three so this is the responsibility of operational transformation algorithm definitely i'm not going into the implementation how it is actually implemented that i will also have to deep dive if it's required but i got that basic understanding of how it actually works is that this operational transformation algorithm will figure out like what what is the updated character location where i have to actually perform this operation and once that is done you will be able to resolve this document to a consistent same state for all the users so this now uh, in this particular example we have two users mandeep and sakshi so they are able to resolve these conflicts and it is converged to a same location uh, same uh, document which is dab so this is what we mean by operational transformation if you want to get into more details uh, we have a google web trans just uh, search for google wave operational transformation white paper you will get a basic information i have read there as, as well so you will get the basic information how it works you can also read it on wikipedia but this is uh, authentic so uh, authentic source so go check it out i, I will definitely uh, share the link the in video description as well so our second approach for uh, doing this operation is three-way merge 
so we mentioned that definitely there are some issues with three-way merge and we will not be moving forward with using it but definitely let's discuss uh, how this three-way merge works so we have these uh, three uh, uh, versions of this document so we have our client text we have server text. basically uh, this is your mandeep and this is let's say your sakshi okay so when i say three-way merge what it means is and this is your uh, server okay so initially uh, they holds the same copy now we are trying to merge them okay now we are we are trying to merge them so client send the text to server server performs three-way merge to merge client and other users changes server sends new copy to client so how it actually works is uh, whenever uh, these operations are uh, in progress whenever i try to do this three-way merge when 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 i try to do this three-way merge all the rights will be uh, blocked for a while okay so it works on a principle that you will allow the rights for let's say five seconds this is their example so let's say you allow all the rights for five seconds so all users can write in that same time now you will say that let's wait for one second for server to uh, resolve the issues and finally after one second it will resolve the issues and then it will merge all the users changes once it is done then it will publish a new version base v2 which is pushed to all the users now users can make the changes again got it so it's kind of related to our optimistic locking approach only where what we are uh, where, uh, what you are doing there is that uh, you are giving a permission for some time that yeah go ahead and uh, write and then after some time uh, you will say that now uh, everyone wait for some time i'm trying to resolve all the conflicts i'm trying to merge all the user changes and once that is done all the users are allowed to write again so it is based on our optimistic logging and it's kind of similar to our uh, two-phase locking where you acquire the lock for some time and then you uh, release the locks for other time so if you don't know what two phase locking means it's the basic description that you uh, acquire the locks for uh, some time interval that that is growing phase where you acquire the locks acquire and then you there is shrinking phase where you release all the locks which are acquired okay so uh, the another uh, approach is differential synchronization so if we uh, go about like what google doc uses is uh, what i got the information from google like by basic google searches google docs use this operational transformation uh, the differential synchronization also solves the problem it is kind of based on how git merge works so but it is based on basically taking a diff what is the diff and then trying to resolve the conflicts or like apply all the changes so you might have like if you have used git uh, there are always chances that multiple users are working on the same code base so if there are some issues uh, like conflicts basically you try to resolve them and then finally the changes are merged into one another so differential uh, synchronization work on the same kind of principle so we have our uh, three copies in the beginning we have client text we have server text and we have common shadow okay so you can assume that uh, these are uh, like let's say these are the two copies of documents client text and service this can be user one and this can be user two the mandeep and sakshi both are doing some collaborative ed editing okay so they are using the uh, same same document and how uh, how this approach works is uh, i have uh, like i will also uh, share this pdf with you how it works so you can also check that out offline again but if i uh, end uh, first thing like another thing if once we uh, like before we move towards the explanation if you want to get into more insights about differential synchronization you can read this paper differential synchronization by fresher at so just uh, search for differential synchronization fresher at google.com you will get a white paper on, on research.google.com so you can read that out so in that document only you will get all this information about uh, three-way merge and differential synchronization so let's uh, discuss on how it actually works so in the start in the beginning uh, we have the same copy so it's it's it holds true for all kind of approaches that in the beginning we have a same copy of the document at all the ends server ke paas copy all the users have the same copy now let's say let's say all users uh, start editing so what is the first operation that works that being that is being performed so common shadow uh we, what what is the first operation is you will take the diff so client did some changes from abc it was changed to dabc dabc so this client text and common shadow will take a diff like what what is the diff of the changes which are being done so if you see abc is changed to dabc so this is our diff here this is a plus that you are have added some changes and you have added d in the beginning so this is the first uh changes which is being done so once you have figured out that you will get the all the list of 
edits which have to be applied okay on client text so this is let's say uh, one edit this is basically your list and this is your one edit let's say you also added uh, a new line here and where you added mandeep so the second change is Mandeep got it so these are the list of changes you figured out that once you are able to figure out that what you will do you will copy this client text to common set of and this copy is identical to client text in step one what was a step one step one was basically when you uh, took the diff of client text client text and common set of so you will uh, copy that text to common set of so it's not your this exactly this was earlier to this so basically you will you should have some kind of snapshot mechanism in place so that before changing this client client text you have taken the snapshot of it and then uh, those changes are copied to uh, common shadow in step three now once that is being done what you will do you will apply these edits to server server text okay uh, once you are able to do that you what will do you will update the server text with result of patch so whatever you have generated here you will update the changes to server text and definitely it, like further it works in the cycle that you will again with common tech uh, common shadow you will try to figure out the edits with server text which you have identified the diff you will generate the list of edits you have figured out like these are changes to be applied to the server text and finally so in this case you have figured out what are the changes to be done at client text and then it come uh, keep on working uh, in circular fashion so this we have discussed and your step four and five are atomic so they should be uh, performed in conjunction with each other so either both of them are successful or both of them are failure okay so this is what we mean by differential synchronization so these are the uh, algorithms which can be used on the collab by the collab service to resolve the conflict now let's discuss on doc versioning we also had a requirement that we have to maintain multiple versions of a document so uh, let's say we have a uh, document uh, doc one in which we have v1 v2 v3 so if, if there is a scenario that i want to switch back to version v1 okay i want to switch back to version v2 from v3 so there should be some mechanism in place there should be some easier mechanism in place that i am able to easily do that uh, what are the uh, things which you can do to achieve this there are multiple ways right so uh, first way is uh, what what is the first way is first way is you keep all the copies of mm -hmm. okay so kya ho raha hai okay so uh, the first way is you keep all the copies of document which will be definitely a storage intensive operation basically what you are doing is uh, this is document one let's say this is your abc then you change d a b c okay then you change e d a b c so you, if you see that you are only adding one character so it's not it doesn't seem like a good choice that i create keep on creating a new versions basis and then keep on storing those copies in my database so this will require a lot of storage to maintain duplicate copies because there are very minute changes okay there are very minute changes which are being done so definitely you should come up with some kind of uh, mechanism or some kind of uh, breaking this data into multiple parts so that uh, you are able to uh, like figure out what, what what are the specific changes and then you can update the versions accordingly so if we uh, move back to our discussion on google drive disc, uh, google drives there we discuss that whenever we are trying to upload the files we will try to uh, break the file into multiple chunks uh, why you are doing that so that your upload functionality works fine and then you can also do that parallel kind of operations okay the, it is little bit different from that but we are trying to do that uh, similar kind of operation here what we are trying to do is we are trying to divide the file into chunks and then check their specific hashes and uh, one such way is merkle tree so what is merkle tree is like we did discuss this merkle tree in case of a dynamo architecture where it is being used for uh, entry and entropy mechanism basically to keep replicas in sync so uh I will give you a basic gist of it. So let's say uh, this is your file. Okay, this is your doc one. So this file is divided into multiple parts. How it is divided? Let's say there are multiple sections. Okay, this is section one. This is section two. In this section, there are multiple paragraphs. This is P1. This is P2. And then in this paragraph, there are multiple lines. L1, L2. Okay, on those same lines. In this line, there are multiple words. W1, W2. Okay. So what you are trying to do? You are trying to divide this document into multiple chunks, such as you are able to figure out the specific place where the, these changes are being done. And once you are able to do that, once you are able to do that, you can a uh, maintain that location. That this is the only location which is being changed. So this way this way you are able to uh, reduce the storage space which is being required so you are 
you can pinpoint the location where this change is being done and definitely in our storage video we will be discussing in our storage video we will be discussing that how this is helpful in case of storage as well definitely we don't want to dump the document as it is into s3 or that kind of storage but we will try to divide the document into multiple chunks and then store it another mechanism is using time series db so at a particular time you will store that what are the changes being done but i will prefer this uh, second approach as such because in this uh, like how we store the documents actually will be based on this approach only so definitely uh, we, we can use uh, the same kind of mechanism for uh, handling the versions as well so let's uh, finally move to our end-to-end -end architecture how is so we uh, right as of now we discussed it in bits and chunks so in first like uh, when when we started on how multiple users can uh, like collaborate with each other there are multiple users so this is your mandeep and this is your saksi so we discussed that we have a front end service where which we have websocket handler and this websocket handler is uh, maintained by this user session service uh, which has a user sessions db which maintains which particular user is connected to which machine okay so and finally this collaboration service uh, operates via user operations queue in which we maintain all the like we pass on all the operations which are being performed by a particular user this collaboration service should uh, handle or like or do all the kind of operational transformation and then finally uh, pass on back on responses so that they are for forwarded to other user users which are subscribed to subscribe to the same document so this way uh, this operation queue is basically in between block uh, which handles the user request and then back passes the responses back to the uh, clients so that the same updates are applied to all the clients and this basically uh, maintains the collab db which uh, stores all the user contributions finally i mean in some kind of service which stores the document so this collab service also gets sync with the doc stories and we have a doc creation api as well directly like when whenever you create a first document uh first time document uh user creates a document or user deletes a document this document service comes in handy uh this basically contains two databases one is document storage db where you actually store the document or the content of the document and one it's your file metadata db where you update or like keep the uh, metadata which is related to our databases is who is the owner of uh, this document who like who and who all like who all are the users with, with which this document is being shared to so this is the uh, overall architecture of the system how you can uh, create this system definitely there can be more microservices which can be introduced and that can depend on how you are scaling this system further but as a start to scale on whatever requirements we have gathered this system should be sufficient enough like one such one such example could be that you have a different service for all together for storage service okay so this storage service is definitely only responsible for storing the documents okay so this document service will interact with this document service and in internally it will interact with this whole service so this is like right now this document service is interacting with users as well as it's interacting with databases so we can definitely extract it out okay so this is one example and definitely it can vary there and you can suggest any suggestions you can uh, give me any suggestion in the comment section so we can definitely work out on that uh here in here i have added just the descriptions of what i have added just for the sake of notes per pur purposes so if you can directly uh, refer this pdf for uh, your offline or uh, like reviewing and like uh, revising or like whatever whatever it uh, works for you okay so uh, if i quickly go through it collab service consume continuous keystrokes okay we whatever changes we are doing the changes are being uh, handled by our collab service and then the response is sent back to all the users so that the doc is updated at client's end the client should send new request once acknowledgement is received from server to ensure updates are applied smoothly so this is around that uh, once uh, let's say this is your user mandeep and this is user sakshi so let's say user uh, update mandeep uh, added anything okay so abc was changed to dabc got it so once this is done these changes are being so, uh, sent to sakshi so once i get this dabc i will send acknowledgement to this uh, user operations queue so that i i am aware of the fact that yeah this update is being applied at sakshi's end so this is one key consideration point now collab service can also help in user chats in if you see google docs there is also functionality that multiple users can interact with each other so it since we are using a websocket connection we can definitely think of another service which provides this functionality instead of collab service because collab service is specifically focused on handling or like doing our operational transformation so definitely we can have different service but since we are maintaining the user connections or like we are maintaining the websocket connections for different users and we have websocket uh, handlers specifically dedicated to the specific user so it it uh, the functionality can be extended to so user chats user chats and so 
who is online it's kind of related to how we discussed around the uh, whatsapp architecture in our uh, previous videos mm -hmm. so go check that out in our system design playlist you will get the insights now there are other consideration points as well services communicate with each other basis events published so like in here we mentioned that there is a direct uh, connection or you can say rest api connection or a synchronous api instead of like in here we already introduced a queue so you can do that uh, as well in different services as well so you can introduce a queue here as well uh, to uh, like pass on the operation what is the changes being done and they can uh, pull the messages from here basis the what, whatever the topic the message is published published to and then perform the updates so this is a uh, one way look to look at it another point key consideration point is that you will have to require distributed transactions to ensure consistency uh, db uh, db stage among multiple services so uh, in here we mentioned that we are using multiple databases right you have file metadata db you have document storage db you have collab db so if you, if you see right there are multiple databases so you will need to have some kind of mechanism or distribution transactions so that all the changes we are done to this multiple databases and if there are multiple tables inside a single database then all the changes should be reflected in all those tables so we will require distribution transactions functionality definitely there got it now let's uh, quickly discuss on database storage so it's like we will not be focusing like we will not be focusing too much on this in this video we will be focusing this in the next video but uh, these are the certain uh, scenarios so first one is like uh, can you use s3 uh, definitely not because we are not trying to store the entire document we are trying to store the document in uh, chunks and we don't want these kind of things that you keep on replacing the document as changes are being done in a real time it will very it will become a very complex uh, uh, operation uh, additionally if you want to provide a search functionality on top of uh, the document which is being stored definitely it will not work on case of uh, s3 we will need to have some kind of index which is being uh, developed or built on top of the document content which is being stored in our database so s3 is definitely not a good solution and there could be you use any kind of document db let's say uh, dynamo db or any of these kind of mechanisms you can use uh, there are multiple databases by google as well such as big table or uh, cloud spanner uh, which is sql version this is no sql version okay so the, there are multiple databases which are available so we will be focusing that in our next video so these are the requirements we will be discussing okay so in this video we will be discussing this only uh stay tuned for the future videos and if you haven't subscribed yet do subscribe it do like the video and share it with your friends share the knowledge with others and tab tak stay safe tata bye bye